All right, this is it. Last video recorded from North America for 2023. <sighs> Busy day. Now, it's gonna be an interesting year, isn't it? What do you think? I think so. Interesting year. Do I have any goals? It's funny when people make goals for the new year. I don't, I've never really done that. I just make a goal and go for it. Why waste time waiting for January 1st to roll around before you start making shit better? Right? One thing I hope everybody's doing is, uh, is doing whatever the hell it is that makes you feel great. You got, you have to do that. That's very, very, very vital. Doing what you love to do and grounding yourself out as often as you can. It's very important. Amongst shit piles of other things, right? I think if I could do one thing this year, if I could, what I absolutely know is truth, I would think that I would try to encourage as many people on the face of the planet as I could to absolutely drop and ignore mainstream news. CBC, CBS, MSNBC, whoever all those other douchebags are, BBC, the whole nine yards, they're all tied into one, owned by, what, six companies? The proof is in our faces to show that they are doing absolute nothing but disgusting, manipulative dog shit to us as a whole, annihilating us as tight, tight close-knit society. Killing it. Killing us. I think if I could this year, every day. I mean, not, not this year coming up. Every day, if I could. I think one of my goals is going to be to beg and plead and for people to start thinking for themselves and to ignore those manipulative, destructive corporations. Mainstream news is their number one tool against every single one of us and is very effective. If you haven't learned that yet, there's nothing I can do for you. If you haven't picked that up yet, I just, all I can do is feel absolutely bad for you. That's about it at this stage of the game. There you go. There's my opening rant. <laughs> now, I asked for a description of the little people. A lot of people have reported on the little people. First Nations communities have always spoke of the little people. And I got a bunch. I could tell by the titles of the emails. So, here we go. Listen to this. It's funny how we ask and the people deliver, right? This is titled, Little Person Description. Hello, Steve. Please don't share my name. I live in Southern Ontario and had an encounter with a little person about 11 years ago. I grew up in a very small town and about a six minute drive down the road, there is a conservation area that was closed down 20 years ago, 20 years ago because they told us that it was turning into a swamp, so it makes trees unstable. <laughs> I personally believe it's for other reasons. But anyways, my father is part Native American and always felt he was very strongly... Let me read that one more time, that sentence. I personally believe it's for other reasons. But anyways, my father is part Native American and always felt... Okay, he was very strongly... So he was always in that conversation area studying the plants for medicine, even to this past summer. All right, a couple typos in there probably. He had told me when I was a little boy that there were things in that forest that people wouldn't understand, which I did believe him, but I was also skeptical because I didn't know what to think. Well, fast forward to when I was a teenager. My father and I were in that forest and he was off studying one of his plants that he felt a real connection to. I myself wasn't really into that. I was more into looking for critters like snakes and frogs, etc. Well, I was walking west down the trail we had come in on. And I was a good distance from where my father was just walking along. Well, out of the corner of my eye, I seen something leaned against a tree. So I stopped and looked over. To my astonishment, there was a three to three and a half foot tall humanoid 
leaning on a tree with his arms crossed. Like it looked, it looked like a male to me. His arms were crossed and he had his legs crossed as well, just staring at me. I stood there and got a really good look at this thing. What I'm, and what I'll say is it wasn't just a little person. It looked a little almost goblinish, but not scary, just different. Its features were more, I'd say, exaggerated and unproportionate to the size of it. It had a larger nose and a large mouth with wrinkles on the forehead. Its eyes were quite large and brown in color. The creature looked like it was gray, but I always thought it looked like it covered its skin in gray clay or mud to be more camouflaged. I will say, Steve, you were on point with your guess to what it was wearing. It looked like it was wearing a buckskin. It was dressed very much like, an, like a Huron native with a long buckskin jacket that was also a tone of gray. The hair was pulled back, either in a ponytail or braid, and was also covered in what looked like gray mud. I looked at this thing for, I'd say, 20 or 30 seconds, and it just leaned against the tree, grinning at me with a look on his face like, Do you believe your old man now? Then, as fast as the encounter happened, and this is the crazy part, the thing faded away like a spirit, and in its place was a branch that was leaning against the tree where it was. I looked back to my father and told him what I'd seen. He then told me about his experience with these beings and that he'd seen quite a few of them in the time he's been coming to the, that conservation area. He said that they are connected to the plants and the ecosystem and that they will give you knowledge about the plants in return for pouches of tobacco. Not cigarette tobacco, as that stuff is poison, but homegrown natural tobacco. He said they are peaceful and are very scared of humans as we are extremely destructive and evil. He said one individual told him we are like an apple with a rotten core. I'm coming out with this as it's time, in my opinion. We're living in a very interesting time, and we all need to come together to bring the truth out as what we have been taught in school and mainstream media is a crock of bullshit. There is indeed a supernatural world out there, and there's a lot we don't know. I'll also say this. Do not, and I repeat, do not go looking for these beings as they do not want you to find them or even try to speak with them. If they want, if they want to connect with you, they will do it on their own terms and you must respect their wishes. These beings can tell who you are as a person and what your intentions are. They have the abilities that make them impossible to find unless they come to you. There you go. That's a very detailed, interesting email. Appreciate that. And I'm finding myself also, um, what is it about the plants your father is interested in? That's a curious part of this email, surprisingly to some maybe. Because if I'm in a, what's called, considered as called a conservation area, and I know that there is a type of being like this in there all the time, and they've made themselves available to me, but I'm still more focused on some plants. Those plants must have some big medicine, man. So what's up with the plants? Is there something I need or we need to know about the plants that your father is so interested in? Right? Because it sounds like they must be freaking interesting. Why is that? Now the little people, there you go. There's, we don't get too many emails in about the little people, but there's been enough passed on and in uh, native folklore that you should probably listen to it and now we have a lot of people in whatever you want to call these times are these modern times <laughs> whatever the, whatever you want to call these times as there's people coming forward with their first hand accounts of seeing these beings take from it what you will or leave it right not too much is actually legitimately crazy these days except for our actions that's about it. Don't you ever feel like a five-year-old kid learning all, go, learning all over again? I do. All the time. I feel like I've been ripped off and I'm learning all over again. But at least it's not too late. Now, here's another one titled Little People Description. Let's see if there's any patterns about to come up, right? I apologize for the lack of description. Okay, this is going to be the previous email from yesterday, I, I believe, then. 
I want to preface this with saying, I don't in any way claim to be an expert on little people. How they all look or even the rate they age. This is just a description of the one I saw. It was about four to five inches tall. It looked just like a human. It had brown hair, shoulder length, kind of wavy curly. I would say it was matted, but definitely unkept. Had a full mustache and a beard seemed to be top of its chest length. Also brown. It was wearing brown pants, plain material, kind of rough looking material. Went to just the top of its ankles. I honestly can't say if it had shoes or bare feet. I just remember seeing ankles and a blue shirt like sky blue pullover with long sleeves. I didn't notice any zippers, buttons or strings or anything like that. I don't know if it had wrinkles or anything like a specific marking like mole or freckles. I also don't know what color eyes it had. I was trying real hard to act like I hadn't seen it. So I didn't look, I didn't look at it. I, didn't, I think you probably meant I didn't really look at it. It was leaning on that, on that block with one arm. Like when you lean on a cabinet or something with your head resting on your hand, just watching me. I don't know what the one my son saw looked like. He just said it ran across the floor to the front door. He saw its legs and arms pumping really fast. End O email. Wow. Here's another one. Another reply coming in from yesterday's mention of the little people. Thanks for that email, man. It's so tough to put yourself there, right? It's like, what? Here's another one. Description, and another thing too, I was thinking about it this morning. It's bad enough, it's hard enough for a lot of people to come forward and share with the public or their community, their household, their co-workers that they saw an 8 or 10 foot tall, 1,000 pound, hairy, human-like being standing there looking at them. That takes a lot to wrap your melon around just seeing that, let alone getting up the balls to share it, right? So... Could you imagine, I'm trying to picture me looking out the window right now and all of a sudden leaning against a little stump over there in the timber like, what the hell is that? Is that a two foot tall dude? What the hell? There's a two foot tall man-like proportionate person standing there looking at me. And all of a sudden they vanish. Oops, that would suck, right? What am I going to do with that? <laughs> what are you going to put yourself being one of these people? What are you going to do with that now? Hmm? Are you going to run to your local radio station and try to get some reporter to give you some attention so you can share what you actually honestly just saw? Who's going to believe that one? Right? Let's keep going. Let's keep digging. Let's keep hearing what people have got to say about this. I'm curious. This one's titled, Description of Little People. Description of Little People. They are between 6 and 12 inches tall. Same general body type and proportions of normal people. All were extremely fit. Males and females, old and young, except none of them were chubby and had any body fat. Very lean and defined muscles. The babies and children go around naked in the summer. The adults wore very little clothing, such as a leather or skin or fur loincloth. The females don't seem to bother covering their chests, which did have little mammary glands that looked like a female bodybuilder's bodybuilder's chest small but muscled in the winter time and cold months they wore fur coats like the eskimo people in canada only it is clearly mouse rat and muskrat fur because they leave the heads and tails like fashionable fur, fur coats from back in the day. The largest individual was the leader, the chief, if you will. He would show up about four times a year, exactly three months apart. He was taller than even the, quote, father, end quote, of the family that lives on my grandmother's property. When he comes, he travels with an entourage of normal 10 to 12 inches. He and his wife were both significantly taller than the rest. 
He's maybe 20 inches tall. His wife is maybe two inches shorter at 18 inches or so inches. 18 or so inches. Most of the year it is only this one family is all who is around. It is a tribe of maybe 10 to 12 individuals, all ages, from babies and toddlers to teenagers and adults. As for their physical features, they have dark, ruddy skin. It looks like the skin of a Native American Indian, leathery as if exposed to lots of open air and sun. For the most part, their bodies were smooth like ours. They do have very, very thick black hair on their heads that sticks straight out, giving it a punk rocker spiked look. Only natural and soft, but very bushy. The male's hair was bigger, like the mane of a lion. Thicker and fuller than the female's. And it comes to a point down the back, like the back hairline disappeared into hairy shoulders, coming to a point down between the shoulder blades. The female's hair was longer, but less of it. Still bushy, but extremely soft looking, like pitch black rabbit fur, also growing only from the head, not the face or body. They have wrinkles around their eyes and mouths. Their eyes are as normal looking as far as I can tell, like normal humans. The iris of the eyes are lighter than their hair, more like brown eyes. The noses are straight and aquiline, little eyebrows, a straight slim mouth and a small chin and jaw, not pointy but narrow. The rest of their bodies are human-like. Five finger, five toes, two arms, two legs. They do wear little leather or fur shoes, like, like little moccasins. In the winter, barefoot in the summer. These little people live in my grandma's property, and we've seen them our, our whole lives. I live in Utah. My name is Jake. End of email. That email opens up, what, about 10,000 questions? <laughs> right? Just a matter of fact, there you go. They live in my grandma's backyard and that's what they look like. Been there all my life. End of story. All right. You gotta, you gotta see the abnormal, uncommon flavor to that email delivered here, right? All right, here's the same one copied twice. I don't know why. Oh, probably because it got sent to both emails, I imagine. There you go. Um, am I seeing a pattern here yet myself? Eh. Not really. I don't think so. Nothing's really grabbing me yet. I don't know. Take from what you will leave you guys. We asked for more detail than little people and we're receiving. But I think on average, from what the First Nations communities have spoke of in the past, is to not talk about them, I believe. Isn't that the going uh, predominant rule in the street, wasn't it? Don't talk about them, don't speak their names, don't say something three times. Which one was that one? That's got to be something to do with the skinwalker, I think. He can't say their names three times or something out loud. I'm getting a little confused in my head right now. Alright, I'll shut up because I'm not making any sense. But there you go. Let's see who else wants to chime in on the little people in the future, right? Bring it. You, got, you have some uh, first-hand information on these little people get it to us all right we just started cracking that open and people are starting to share let's hear it hear more of it now what do we got here this one's titled sasquatch my name is matthew chandler i'm 12 years old i was going down to my bus stop it was still dark and i lived in the middle of the and I lived in the middle of the woods. At the time, I felt like I was getting watched by someone or something. Then I heard a loud scream. And then at the other side of the road, I heard the leaves on the ground it was getting shuffled around. And when I heard it, I heard a low growling noise. Not every time I go down to the bus stop. I'm sorry. Now, every time I go down to the bus stop, I feel like I'm being watched. End of email. That's it. Okay, Matthew. You might want to tell your parents or somebody about this and start talking about it openly in your neighborhood, all right? That's my advice to you as a short, abrupt email. I hope you got, if this is seriously going down, I hope you have somebody safe you can share this shit with. 
So it's going down, whatever's going down around there. You might, I hope you got somebody safe you can share this with and act, tell them about it and keep us posted on the reaction. And if you got nobody to share it with, send them this email or maybe another one, whatever. Here's another one. Two teen girls. First, Sabai, Sabai, Sab, I'll call it Sabe Encounter plus a real truth. The little people question mark. Well, at this point, I've shared a few weird encounters with you, Steve. In the last part of this letter, two teen girls, I would never have realized without everyone who wrote in to you, so I am pre-thanking you all. Honestly, my life has been entirely, my life has entirely been changed after hearing you read so many people's stories, combined with losing my position during that time, which gave me time to start to question everything. Four frequent flyers I wrote first of two orbs in my home that responded to my communication. Knocks on my door. A picture of an angel came up with a hole through its mouth. I've learned supernatural is what we have been lied to about. Supernatural is natural because we have been lied to. I believe at this point about almost everything. For longer than we know, numerous resets have happened for selfish reasons. Yes, there are laws to the universe, some rules that those who know don't want to break, and they know how to get around them. Stevie asked why the weird behavior by some beings, and this is what I've learned. After watching you share stories, one night I said out loud to an empty house. For your information, this is after listening to you for about three months daily. For like an hour, I kept repeating, God, I want to know the truth. Is this true? Are there others? Are we related? Over and over for like an hour. I don't know what triggered me to do so. Sincere talking from my heart to God that night out loud, but what most might say is my weird slash odd behavior talking to myself caused the following. It started slowly, within days. So many branches broke. Handprints, feathers, noises knocking, glowing gold orbs video, videos. It only builds. Please, I'd love to learn about little people experiences. Fast forward six months later, I wrote you about my hand being touch, touched through my tent by a Sabe person who looked in through the star seeing area two nights in a row. All I remember was thinking, okay, I asked for the truth. This hand was as big as a baseball glove. Our hands were pressed together. I was shoved in a small tent, if you remember, with two kids, so my hand was already pressed against the side while asleep. Also, the warm, large hand was soft, not rough, like ours getting, like ours get working outside. Since then, I know that I'm in communication on a regular basis, but not just the Sabe people. Now, yes, I've had handprints on my car. Greasy. Also, some fun gifts. Frustrating, greasy prints on my ceiling. They love to be funny. The only thing I asked was, please, never to be loud or yell or scare my family. If things I've experienced in the last four years would blow one's mind. And I absolutely do not believe it is my Sabe family. I'll include pictures where I buried a baby squirrel. The next day, a little napkin was sticking out. An animal would have dug it up odd so the next morning a picture included a branch was broke above the grave two months later just the other day december 21st i checked the little grave again driving 30 miles over to it and they placed some other little critter right next to it i buried it keep in mind i had just moved two months previous what's crazy what's so interesting everyone should know we have to have different dimensions Someone heard me ask to know the truth and I could handle being and I could handle being clairvoyant. I didn't get why the tiny piece of napkin sticking out, so they broke the branch, let me know again. It was to show me it was them. I don't I did cry a lot over that little squirrel. Many others show their heart. Many scientists believe time is happening all at once. The little critter in the photo placed there when I went for a visit two months later. How do they know? I didn't know I'd go visit 
I didn't know I'd go visit my place that morning. Thoughts and feelings are energy. Scans show thoughts as lights coming from areas in our brain. I believe the universe is so much more than we realize. And like you say, this is just the easiest, obvious starting talking point. So the different behaviors. What would you do if you could raise your vibration, float around one of the lower species or beings that think they are all alone? Because we use five senses where there is told to be over 100. Did you know NDEs all say these 360 degrees when they float above their body? Let me read that again. Bracket. Did you know NDEs all say they see 360 degrees when they float above their body? You're not in physical body, but they still see. Also, also they can repeat what some said in a different part of the hospital. When someone catches a sabe, we feel fear, startled. They feel that. I think that's how they look up right into someone's eyes. We have watchers. No, not just the sabe of the woods. We are energy, literally made by one source. Now, because of educating myself and my watchers, bracket, angels and brack, and bracket, I can now hear and see what others cannot. Yet. We told, we told our so folklore, any certain people, sorry, we told so folklore, only certain people have gifts. We all do, but they have been suppressed. All pushed into school systems. We must have credit cards, work until you're 70, that we need borders, don't share resources, fake government leaders. If and when, and you're ready, Anyone can get back what has been lost. About those who had an awful experience, I had a true growl at 4 a.m. from a bush. I could see complete. I could see completely see through. Nothing there. Just like with humans, some good people, some not wanting to be good. A terrible mind speak, not sabe. Some that know if they can get under your skin, they will. You, we are all made from the light. Even if we are acting like a shithead, we all have the power pull our source energy and change or not. We live on free will planet. Now here's what I learned from, from you all. Now when I was a freshman, 14 year old girl, me and my girlfriend snuck out. We put up a tent half a mile behind her house, hurried as the sun was setting, and ran up to the logging road 100 feet above us. We set out a log as a marker on the side and quickly picked up by one of the local boys to ride around Shelton, Washington. Literally, we just drove around for a few hours doing nothing. No flashlight. I mean, we had a marker out, right? We dropped, when dropped off, we figured just walk out, just walk from out log marker to our tent. Guess what? We got lost way before cell phone times. I was in short sleeve and shorts. I was so cut up from sticker bushes trying to find a tent in the dark woods. We did find a four foot by six foot clean stump we decided to climb up to, try and sleep, knowing we needed light to find our tent. Shivering, my best friend in my arm trying to sleep. Fear information was taller, so of course I was the outside spoon. Her fast asleep in her jeans and sweatshirt, brat. I heard someone walking in the brush. At first I thought it had to be her older brother, maybe checking on us, with no flashlight. And that far away from her house, and he really didn't care like that either. So now we're in a clear cut, in a forest. Nobody living out there yet. It was clearly footstep it was clearly footsteps. Then they got within like ten feet, but I was too terrified to move. I whispered to my friend, her ear right by my mouth. I was so quiet because I was terrified. I peed my shorts, my heart racing. I never slept and what, and whatever never moved away. I felt we were served up on a huge platter. It was loud and just disappeared. I asked if she heard anything, knowing she didn't move, like knocked out. 
what was really odd, I told myself until all of what was really odd, I told myself until all of your letters and then seeing with my eyes a sabe, it was deer drinking from a creek. We were in a clear cut, no creek or water or dry. We were in a clear cut, no creek or water in dry, but cold summer nights. Why did I make up that lie to myself? And I remember a few other things as a younger kid. I'm guessing the watchers, as they are here for us, know when we are ready for everything or some nothing. It's too overwhelming in this life because we have been taught to not know our true abilities, only taught fear. As always, in love and light, and thank you for what you do, Jess. All right. There's a few photos. One of some rocks. It's easier for me to do it this way, okay, guys? There's another one of some kind of fur. And there's another one of a, the branch broken. I guess that was above the, the, uh, the, the little animal grave, right? There's another one. So there's the broken branch and the rocks at the bottom. I'm guessing that's the full scene of the animal grave. There we go. Someone who has been researching, learning, and possibly changing their vibration, right? Interesting. I'm looking forward to learning from some people who speak on the same same tone as this person who just emailed to us. I think there's a lot there. For sure. There's a lot going on. We are lied to and we are taught with fear, right? Everything's fear. Fear of failing. Fear of this. Fear of that. Fear of... Fear, fear, fear. And that one, the, the massive, big, misleading one that most of society has accepted to work your ass off until you're 65. Holy shit. Wow. That's a bad one, isn't it? And how many of you out there are probably thinking I'm nuts for speaking of that this way? What? That's what you do. You work until you retire. <laughs> really? I didn't ask to come here to work till I retire. I didn't ask for that. I didn't choose that. I was just told that. Sat in that class and programmed to accept that as who it's going to go and what do I want to be? What do you want to be? Right? What do you want to be in this lifetime? You're going to have to be something. You're going to have to be somebody. I am? Pretty sure I'm who I am the day I was born. More like, what do you want to, what do you want to learn? What do you want to learn? Okay, I'm starting to babble. My brain's out here and is definitely not meshing up my lips so I'm going to keep it to the voices being heard until I can until I have my delivery smooth okay what's this one talk I don't know what this is about this is titled answers from the grave hi Steve this is Jaden Taylor share my effing name please done Done, Jaden. My dad, Michael Taylor, wore a veteran wounded twice in Iraq and Afghanistan. You read at least five of my dad's emails about the Sabe at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. CCTV cameras, IR to boot, and it jumping two fences, 10 and 15 foot high with razor wire like a frog. Totally remember that description. My dad passed away March 8th, 2023. I'm sorry. I am very sorry and sad to read that. Jaden, from supposedly cancer from burn pits in Iraq, which my stepmom, my siblings, and myself are beginning to question. We're thinking it happened back here in the States. My dad was a pain in the Army's ass, the VA's ass. He always questioned their honesty. We are questioning it now, too. They're constantly effing my stepmom and money from my dad being wounded. Sorry, this is so long, but 
I've been trying to write this for over three months now. Every time I start, I get so choked up and the upset that I have to stop. My dad wrote a journal about everything he witnessed. In, sorry. My dad wrote a journal about everything he witnessed. The goat man gun battle. The flying green woman. Bracket witch and bracket he believed. Or a djinn. Getting hit in the head with a rock thrown by a sabe. That's what caused my dad to go to the VA. And a long story short, when he found out about his cancer. He wrote about when he first got to Iraq about the museum with the giant crates, 12 of them. I know you read that email. It wasn't too long after you read it on YouTube. He passed away. My dad had something happen to him at a dam on the Euphrates River in northern Iraq had a secret prison inside the dam in Haditha, Iraq. The second day, he was sent into the bowels of it. He wrote down the sounds he heard, haunted him until the day passed away, just like the Sabe event. It was just as powerful, and the goat man and green flying woman. He said that the sounds were as if 30 to 50 foot being was in the gigantic chains and the bellows of the thing down lower was extremely loud and haunting. It must have been bad for my dad to even talk or write about it. He thought it was a fallen angel, question mark? Steve, I have to stop now. I'm tearing up badly getting upset writing this. Very sad and heartbreaking to read his words. I'll send more from his journal, journal when I can muster up the courage and strength to share. I'm very sorry for not sharing all in this email. Thanks again for your email back after you sent me a reply saying to me and my family that we would see him again and to be the man he was. Steve, I'm trying truly, but they broke the mold after my dad was born in my eyes. God bless you and your family and animals. May God keep you all safe. My dad's final entry in his journal was, Get busy living or get busy dying, and I'm doing both. Much respect to you and my much respect to you from my family, Steve. Jaden, Kansas City. Okay, Jaden, the second you hear me read this aloud publicly, please, I am urging you to, wherever that journal is being kept, you better get it out of there now. You better keep it somewhere that's not directly related to your family on paper, on the internet, on addresses, on envelopes, on utility bills, whatever. You better get that sucker photocopied and make about five copies and spread them all around and hide them. All right? Okay. Do it. Do it now. Don't do it tomorrow. Don't do it later tonight. Do it right now. Photocopy that journal five or six times completely and spread that sucker around and hide it. All right? And if you want to share his knowledge here with all the people through me, I'll do it. All right? And even if you don't, make sure you make at least five or six copies of that journal and spread them out physically over miles even, whatever it takes. Just spread them out so it's absolutely impossible for the douchebags to eliminate that journal. All right? Please. There you go. I'm going to cut this one a little short. It's a lot to chew on in today's session. I got a lot to chew on daily anyway, no matter what. I think a lot of us do. But I'll, I will, uh, I'll be back here sharing more. I'm not going to stop. The only thing that's going to stop me from sharing all the people's voices is when I can't get any air out of my lungs anymore. That's about it. It's the only way I'm going to stop. This is the only way we learn truth is listening to every single person. It's the only way. That's all we have right now is each other, and that is it. That's it. We only have each other, you guys. You gotta learn how to trust each other. Lose being scared of each other, alright? Don't be scared of each other anymore. For us to have our, what could be called, power taken away, all you gotta do is start being scared of each other, and it's done. Done. Deal. As soon as we're scared of each other, it's done. It's over. You don't have any power anymore. You got nothing. 
as soon as you are scared of each other in your community, you have absolutely nothing and you need to be led around. End of story. But anyway, it's a great day to be alive. There's a lot of good in the world. Make sure you do what makes you feel absolute kick-ass, excited, and happy. Even if you only do it for five minutes. I don't give a shit what it is, but you have to do it, all right? Keep your vibration up there. Try to get your vibration up there. Don't get sucked into the darkness. Don't take all the negative pills and swallow them because they're delivered daily by the mainstream sons of bitches. Fight against it. Raise your vibration. Look at the bright light. Look at the good side of the coin every time it flips, all right? There's a lot of good going on out in this world. There's a lot of good here. There's a shit pile of good here. Concentrate on the good. All right? Concentrate on the good. Kick the mainstream manip man manipulative machine to the side. Teach your children the truth about it. All right? There we go. I got to shut up. I'm rambling away. I got to go. We got to go. We got a lot to do. And we're leaving today. I'll be back again. Oh, I'll be back again. Can't stop me. <laughs> huh? Now I'm waiting to see what the hell we're doing. This is how you come down.